Hey everyone, I'm Mike Sattel, founder of Sattel Tutoring, and in this lesson, we're going to talk about things you can do to get a 750 or hopefully better in the SAT math section. This is extremely difficult to do. Only about 2% of people are able to do this, so if you can get to this mark, it is a remarkable achievement. You should definitely be sending this to every single college you apply to, and it will make you competitive at some of the most competitive colleges in the United States. So this is a really important achievement. Not everyone's going to be able to do it, though, so don't get discouraged if you can't. In fact, a lot of people who are otherwise very, very, very good at math in school cannot get to this mark because they are not thinking about the math in the right way. So we'll talk about things to memorize, ways to strategize, and I'll give you a sense of how many questions you can get wrong to achieve this kind of score on your SAT. So first, let's go with things to memorize. This goes without saying, but everything I talk about in the lessons on getting a 600 in math and a 700 in math, you need to have all of that perfectly memorized. So if you're not that great at algebra or you're still forgetting what the different quadratic equations look like, you are not going to get a 750. You cannot have any hesitation on that stuff. So this is another kind of reminder that studying for the SAT and improving your score is an incremental task. If you are only scoring like 620, 640 right now, what are you doing watching this video? You are not prepared. You are not going to make a 100 point jump to a 750, you need to master the basics first. Only when you're at like a 700 pretty consistently, maybe a 690, are you really able to kind of start to incorporate the strategies you need to push it to the next level and get a 750. At that point, there aren't going to be very many topics that you don't know, that you haven't encountered or mastered at this point. Some things that just maybe show up very rarely on the SAT. In statistics, maybe the box plots, you need to really know how they work. There are some basics that you probably encountered along the way, but you need to know things about like the quartiles and how to find those. Shifting data sets, when we add a point, remove a point, move all the points, add a number to them, what's going to happen to the data set, what's going to happen to the mean, the median, all that stuff, those are things you need to be comfortable with. You also in geometry need to focus on some of the more obscure things that really don't come up very often, things like the unit circle, which is usually about 30, 60, 90 triangles, and then congruent triangles, the reasons that we can prove those correct. Again, these are things that come up maybe once every 10 SAT. But if you're looking for that 750 or better, then no topic is too obscure for you to spend a little bit of time memorizing important information. But I can't really think of anything else. Everything else you probably would have dealt with along the way. And now it is time to make sure our strategies are great. And the most important thing for getting a 750 is we need quick, reliable step one strategies. So I talk about these all the time. Things like plug points into equations, arithmetize, using desmos, in geometry, drawing radiuses and making triangles. These are moves that work no matter the context. And that's the thing, is a lot of people who are really good at math in school are really just good at memorizing the steps in a process. And so when you get a question that you've never seen before, you do not have the steps memorized and you freak out. This happens to a lot of my students who are getting A's in their AP calculus class. That is not enough to get a 750 on the SAT. You need to be flexible with math. You need to have certain moves that work even when you get to questions you've never seen before because that is how the SAT works. They are going to give you hard questions that you would never have seen even through all of your advanced math classes in school, but also even if you have looked at a thousand SAT practice math questions, you will still get to your real SAT and see things that you've never seen before. The topics will be the same, but they'll be put together in ways that you could never have imagined. And so we need moves that get us started on that problem quickly and confidently without worrying about knowing all the steps that come later. This is a very important thing, this flexibility with math that we need to have for the SAT. We also need to be thinking about trap answers. A good place where this happens a lot is percentages. A lot of people who, again, are very good at math in school cannot wrap their head around this. They are not thinking about trap answers because they're not humble. They assume that they know all the things they need to know and they're wrong and they fall right into traps. Percentages are a big one on the SAT. And you just need to be constantly thinking about this when you get to the second half of each module where the hard questions are. If something feels too easy, it probably is. You're probably falling for a trap. But some people cannot incorporate that thinking into their process and so they lose probably four or five questions per exam on trap answers. For you, if you're getting a 750 on some of the practice tests and then walking out of the SAT and getting a 700 on the real thing, a lot of it probably comes down to trap answers. It also might just come down to pacing issues. So let's talk about how we're going to pace ourselves to maximize the number of points we're gonna to get to get that 750. Now, in the first module, you cannot get anything wrong. All questions need to be right. 
There will be hard questions here, but you will have the time to get through them. Even if you have no idea what's going on, you need to force your way through. Use Desmos, pick numbers, plug them in, write things down in your scratch paper, see what happens. Just try everything you can think of. This is where that cleverness and flexibility really come in. You need to force your way to zero mistakes on that first module, and you'll have the time to tinker with those questions, so use it. Then in the hard module, yes, it will be more dense, there will be more hard questions, and so you might need to make choices. But you can get up to three questions wrong and probably still get a 750. As you can tell from the note there, this is something that is not set in stone, so it varies per test. It matters which questions you get right and wrong, but generally speaking, you are allowed to make a few mistakes and still get a 750, which is an amazing score. Again, only like 1% of people are getting it. So if we make choices about what we cover, what, what questions we spend time on, we can make sure that we are maximizing the correct answers and we are sacrificing some things that maybe will take a long time or that we really just don't have a good sense of how to solve. So you got to make sure you're making smart choices, but along the way, you also cannot make any careless mistakes. In the first module, I would say, again, nothing can be wrong, but really the hard questions in the first module don't start until about number 19, 18. But in the hard module, the number 15 is where the first hard question really is. Some things before that might feel hard, but no. If you know all the things you know are supposed to know, if you've memorized all the formulas and all the topics, then pretty much everything up to 15 should be very routine and very robotic. So you need to be getting all of that right confidently and quickly so that you have tons of time to work through the truly hard stuff from 15 on. So anything before that is a careless mistake. And here's the thing, and this is kind of going to that note up there. <laughs> The SAT, for whatever reason, punishes us for getting easy questions wrong more than it punishes us for hard questions. So if those three wrong are easy questions at the beginning of the module, they're not impressed by the fact that you got all the hard ones right. They are going to cost you more points, probably even get rid of that 750. So you've got to be really careful on the stuff that you know you can get right. And then at a certain point in the test, you're going to need to make smart choices about what you spend your time on. And part of that is being humble and recognizing that there might be a question or two that you do not understand and just do your best to work around that stuff, guess randomly, and spend all of your time making sure you can lock up points on the things you do know how to get right. Hopefully this was helpful. If you have any questions or anything about different topics that might show up, put them in the comments. Definitely go check out my channel though. My homepage has lots of lessons on the important things to memorize for the math sections and I will be making more and more lessons, especially about those obscure topics. So make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss those. Again, I'm Mike Sattel, founder of Sattel Tutoring. And remember when it comes to your scores, don't settle for less, Sattel for more. Thanks for watching.